In this video, we are going to be loading a custom ROM onto a OnePlus 7T. This is an excellent way to de-Google and to help prevent some data collection on your day-to-day -day life. Google, of course, collects a lot of location data. They collect your app data, websites visited. Basically, nothing on an Android phone is private. But OnePlus has an awesome reputation for working with XDA developers. XDA is a group of developers that develop open source Android to help either improve privacy or enhance functionality. Before we get started on this, I will warn you, do not do this unless you know what you're doing or you're willing to sacrifice your device. It is possible that you could permanently brick an Android phone doing this process. Personally, I've accepted that I may lose $380 roughly on this OnePlus 7T, and I am okay with that. That is acceptable for my privacy. Let's get started. This is a brand new device, so it's never been turned on before. I will just turn it on, and we will boot in. The first boot up takes a little bit of time, so I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video right here. Okay, we're on the standard Android start page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through most of these options really, really quickly. I'm setting everything that's kind of privacy centric. I'm not going to connect it to Wi-Fi. I don't want any kind of notifications. We're trying to keep this from being fingerprinted. There's not even a SIM card installed on this. The first thing we need to do once we're logged in is go in and enable developer mode. So we'll just go into settings. We'll go into about phone. And then on this option over to the right, there it should say build options. Click that seven times. And now it says you are a developer now. Now we can go back. And under system, there's an option that says developer options. Now we can set OEM unlocking and USB debugging. One of the things when you allow USB debugging is you need to allow it for each computer that you're going to be doing debugging with. So in this case, I'm going to unplug this plug it back in, and then select Always Allow for this device and allow USB debugging on this specific computer. We need to boot into the bootloader. So for this, we're going to turn off the phone. I think the instructions were the power button and both the volume buttons. And now we're in the bootloader. Now the instructions say we can connect the phone to our PC and the ADB fast boot shell. In my case, I'm running on Linux. I decided to do this the way that would work most universally. So the steps here are going to be almost exactly the same as Windows. In Linux, you can actually install ADB. But in Linux, you can also run it the same way as Windows, which is you download the latest ADB version. And that's what I have here in this folder. For Windows to open up a PowerShell, just click Shift and then right click, or go up to the top bar and type in CMD to open up a command prompt in this window. For Linux, you can just right click and then open in a terminal. When you're in the bootloader, if you type in ADB devices, there's no devices connected. The command changes to fastboot devices. Because I'm in Linux, I have to type in sudo to do this as an admin. And you can see that the phone is connected. Now I'm going to attempt to unlock the bootloader. And the phone is asking for a confirmation. I'll use the volume buttons, which should be navigation. 
to unlock the bootloader. Use the power button as an entry key. Phone is rebooting. I'm just going to double check to make sure that I don't have to go through setup again. Hopefully not. If that's not required, then I'll jump right back into the bootloader. Otherwise, I'll just quickly go through the setup that I showed you earlier and get back into the bootloader. That way you can see all of the steps involved here. It looks like setup is required again. I'm just going to go through this and restart the video once we are back into the bootloader. For the uninitiated, I'm just going to point out right now that during the reboot, everything was wiped, including the settings for USB debugging, which we do need. So I just went ahead and re-enabled developer mode. And now we're going to plug this back in and remember to allow USB debugging again because all of our settings were completely wiped out. But now we should be able to go through and complete all of the steps that are in the XDA forums. This was just prep work for a brand new phone. Of course, anyone who has a custom ROM already installed has all of these settings handled. But in our case, this is a new phone, so it took a couple of extra setup steps. And we can go back over to our terminal and check ADB devices. And we can see that it is connected. Now I will clear and ADB reboot. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now we can go into bootloader by holding down the power button and the volume up, volume down. Now we can continue with the process. The next command is fastboot W. Most likely this will say you do not have permission. On a Windows machine, you probably will be able to use this command. Looks like I do not have permission. And the command worked just fine. This might be frustrating for Linux users. Always remember to do sudo. I have a friend who installed a custom ROM on his phone and he did not have a good time. Now the next command is fastboot reboot fa fastboot and of course sudo on Linux and we need to make sure that we're in fastboot D. So the command for this is fastboot get ver is user space. And of course, you have to type in sudo. So I have to close this terminal and start over. So I'm just clicking up on the keyboard to go up to the last command and type in sudo. Instructions say that if you get a yes back, you're in good shape. The next command they have on here has me a little bit nervous because this is the point where you may Brick your device if you pick the wrong file. But I'm just going to go for it and we'll see what happens. So sudo fastboot update and then it says rom.zip. And the issue here is that there are multiple files here. So there's the boot image. I believe that it's this top one, AOS IP 10 official hot dog G or hot dog B. And I have the file set up and in my directory here, what we're going to do is get a list so that I can make sure I'm picking the right one.
sudo fastboot update and hope that if this is the wrong zip file, if there's a different zip file from his downloads page, that this system will warn me. Everything looks like it's running okay. I think this will take a bit of time. So from here, I will pause the video. There's supposed to be a couple of warnings at this point. If it says archive does not contain xyz.sig, this is normal, ignore that. After the above is done, the device will automatically reboot into AOS IP, have fun. And then optional, there's a couple of other pieces of software that we can install. Most of them, I believe, will decrease device security. Once this restarts, we'll go in and we'll install some basic software that will allow us to run Android apps and also help ensure system security. See you in a few minutes. All right, our custom ROM is installed. What we're going to do now is this device does not have a SIM card installed. And I don't want to connect it to my Wi-Fi because then it will be fingerprinted. And one of the po whole points of running a custom ROM is that you get out of the spyware infrastructure. I'm going to go through the next couple of steps after I install the SIM card to show you what order of operations you need to go through to make sure that your device does not get fingerprinted. Now we have the SIM card installed and we have opened up our web browser. I should note here that fingerprinting only blocks you from being advertised to. The government, your phone carrier, everyone's going to know what device you have and the information about it. This is just about maintaining personal privacy. Once you have DuckDuckGo set up, what we need to install are MicroG, which is an alternative to Google Apps. And we'll see if that's installed. It looks like it's not. MicroG is like Google Play services, but it is privacy driven. So it masks your identity for apps that you install. Micro G. APK. The logo on the first page looks so much like Google that I thought that it was Google Play Store. Going to download services core. Now the download's complete. Phone is not allowed to install unknown apps from unknown sources. Fortunately, we just made a video about this a couple weeks ago about how to enable side loading of apps. So we'll go to settings, apps and notifications, and then special app access. Install unknown apps. Browser, we will allow installation from this source. Micro G is now installed. 
we're going to download a clone of the Android store also via APK we'll navigate to the top bar in anticipation of that download completing and we're logging in as an anonymous user. Now you'll notice that I haven't installed or I haven't set up Wi-Fi yet and this is on purpose. We want to set up our VPN before we connect to Wi-Fi because as soon as we connect to Wi-Fi all of the internet services will immediately know our home address and when they know our home address, we've been fingerprinted. In my case, I use NordVPN. I just got it on sale. The advantage to NordVPN is not that you're super, super private, but all of your traffic is pooled with anyone else that is using Nord servers. I'm going to pause the video right here while I give Nord my login information. Nord is now installed, and I started going through and setting up all of the settings, but you may want to know what these are also. Number one, I set this up for auto-connect, whether on Wi-Fi or on cellular. Really, the most important is on Wi-Fi. The other thing that you're going to want is the kill switch. And with the kill switch, what you want to do is you want to ensure that any connections without VPN are disallowed. Again, this is to help prevent your device from being fingerprinted to your home address. Again, this does not protect you from any kind of government investigation, warrant, anything that they will want to do. This is entirely to prevent you from being spied on for the purposes of advertisement also, it's not illegal for Google to give any of your private information to the government without a warrant. So it also helps ensure that you have access to your due process rights. From this point on, you can go through and you can install all of your standard apps through the Aurora store. I'm not going to go through and show that yet. I will probably do a recap video and give my input on how this device works, but I wanted to get this video up as quickly as possible because the OnePlus 7T is available right now at B&H for $350 plus tax. So you can have a privacy-centered phone, brand new, out of box. You don't have to buy anything used from eBay or go through some unknown provider. You can ensure and take full ownership of your security immediately using a device like this. This particular distribution is completely free and open source, which means that it is privacy centric because people can review the code. It's probably not as secure as Graphene OS. And I think that it is a version of Lineage OS, uh, a fork, if you will, because if we know one thing about Linux and open source people, they love to fork. Thanks for stopping by and watching this video. If you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. Give me a thumbs up to help out with the algorithm and leave a comment if you have any kind of questions. This is Nick, signing out.